you remember the first time you heard someone say that your front door of your physical location is no longer the front door of your church, but that your church website is the new front door of your church? It only seems like a few years ago that I actually started using that language, maybe four or five years ago. And for a time, I believe that to be true. But I'm gonna tell you that today, I don't think that your church website is the front door of your church. I actually think that the new front door of your church is actually your Google business profile. Okay, maybe it's not the front door, but it's the, at the very least, it is the window through which people are peeking before they actually approach your front door. And so what I wanna do today in this episode of the Missional Marketing Podcast is I wanna talk to you about some best practices for utilizing your Google business profile to make sure that you're taking advantage of this tool that Google offers all churches so that you can reach more people. Uh, my name is Bart Blair, and I am the co-host of the Missional Marketing Podcast, flying solo today. Uh, this is season four, episode two of the Missional Marketing Podcast. And uh, we produce this podcast to help your church grow by leveraging digital marketing and effective communications. And uh, in this day and age, utilizing your Google business profile is a significant uh, element to increasing your digital footprint in your community and reaching more people online. Now, why should you be investing time and energy into your Google business profile? For starters, people are checking you out online, and that is often a place that they see you first. And when you are uh, investing time and energy and resources into your Google business profile, you're creating a strong first impression for people who first discover you by searching you in Google, Google Maps, or Google Local Finder. Okay, those are places that people can find you and you want them to have a strong first impression and your Google business profile is often the place that they're getting that first impression. Secondly, when you are actively using your Google business profile, Google will reward you with more local SEO juice. What is local SEO? Local SEO is basically the way that people find a brick and mortar location online. So if you're searching for a physical location, church near me, Chinese restaurant near me, chiropractor near me, whatever it is that you're searching, uh, Google uses a certain type of criteria to rank those businesses in what we call the local pack, in the local finder, and in Google Maps. Now, we have lots of content on our website, blog content on local SEO. We have other podcast episodes that we have done about local SEO, and we have some training videos on our YouTube channel, all related to local SEO. So if you'd like to learn more, uh, just dive in there. You can email me at uh, missional marketing, B Blair at missionalmarketing.com. You can uh, go to missionalmarketing.com, go to our contacts page, and you can actually set up an appointment with someone on our team who can actually walk you through uh, how to improve your own local SEO profile. We have some services that we offer churches to help them rank higher uh, in local SEO. But that is not what this podcast episode is about. That being said, utilizing your Google business profile will actually help increase your local search rankings. So I hope that that is good motivation for you to want to do some of the things, if not all the things that I'm gonna be sharing with you today. All right, here's the first thing that you need to be doing in your Google business profile on a regular basis, weekly, at least monthly, no less often than quarterly, okay? And that is that you need to be updating photos and videos on your Google business profile. Check out your photos. Are they up to date? Are they telling the story that you want to tell? You have the ability to upload photos, to delete and remove photos. And one of the things that's very common is that people in your church will often either upload photos themselves or Google will geotag photos that they have taken at your location and add them to your Google business profile. And sometimes those photos are less flattering than you would like them to be. Sometimes they don't adequately tell the story that you want to tell. Um, I have talked to churches that uh, have um, other, in their, in their uh, general geographic area, they have other landmarks that people are taking photos of, and sometimes those photos end up getting geotagged to their Google business profile, even though the photos have nothing to do with their church. And you need to go into your Google business profile and you need to check those photos and any photos that you don't want showing up in your Google business profile, you hit the little flag button in the upper right hand corner and you give a reason why you want that photo removed. Maybe it's inappropriate. Maybe there's a copyright issue. Maybe you don't have permission. Uh, maybe it's not an accurate photo. Maybe it's a poor quality photo. Those are all the different options that you have. Um, use that as a way of getting some of those photos removed that aren't telling the story that you want to tell. Another thing that a lot of people don't realize is that you can actually upload videos to your Google business profile. Uh, you can shoot a short 
a welcome video and give a little introduction and post that on your Google business profile. Many churches are creating content from their Sunday sermons, creating short clips, posting them on uh, Instagram Reels and TikTok and maybe on your Facebook account. You can actually post some of those short videos on your Google business profile. Again, this gives people a really good look into your church so that people know what your church is all about and what to expect. And hopefully it leads them either hitting the direction requests or at least clicking over to your website to dig in a little bit more about who you are and what you have to offer them as they're searching for maybe spiritual uh, answers to spiritual questions or uh, felt need ministries or just a new community to get to know Jesus and to grow in their faith with him, all right? So first thing that you need to be doing in your Google business profile on a regular basis is checking your photos and videos and updating those to make sure that they're telling the story that you want to tell. The second thing that you need to be doing in your Google business profile on a regular basis is asking for reviews. I actually did a an entire podcast episode on the topic of, uh, of reviews and whether or not having reviews on your Google business profile help your church reach more people. The answer to the question is they do, okay? And so if you click right up here, I'm posting a, a link to that previous episode. I'll also put it in the show notes below. Um, make sure that you check out that episode. I'm not gonna get into the details of that today. Just a quick overview of reviews. Uh, you need to be asking people for reviews. And in that previous podcast episode, I, I think it's a podcast episode, or it might just be one of our training videos. Um, anyway, it's it's linked right there. There, I put it there again. You can click on that right now, and you can go watch that video if you want to. It's also in the show notes below, okay? Uh, it'll walk you through exactly how to get a short link so that you can ask people to give you reviews. You know, I, I kind of go by this adage. When people are new in your, your church, and maybe they've been visiting for a few weeks, they're really excited about what they're experiencing. They're, they're enjoying the children's ministry. Their kids are getting a lot out of it. Uh, they're excited about the teaching, maybe about the music, maybe about the relationships, new connections that they're making with people. They're excited about you as a church. It's in someone's really their first few visits that they're most likely to leave you a review. So somewhere in your assimilation strategy, maybe it's your follow-up emails from your children's ministry after families have, have just started checking kids into the children's ministry. Maybe uh, it's uh, in your welcome uh, follow-up after someone has given for the first time. Uh, maybe it's an orientation class that you do. Uh, you should ask people to leave reviews. Now, I know it, it sounds a little weird to do that. And again, I talk about that in that previous video, but here's the language that I use. Tell people that they can be digital missionaries and help your church reach more people by leaving a Google review. If you love missional church, you can help more people find missional church by leaving us a five-star review on Google, okay? Really, really important that you're adding new reviews on a regular basis because people are reading your reviews. Now, anytime someone leaves you a content-rich review, and content-rich means they didn't just click the four-star or the five-star, they actually wrote something, you're looking for a reason to respond to those and a link that you can provide to the website that's related to what they actually talked about. Maybe they talked about the preaching. Maybe they talked about the children's ministry. Maybe they talked about the foreign missions. Maybe they talked about small groups. Whatever it is that they mention in the review, you want to provide a link in your response to their review, right to that page on your website. Why do you wanna do that? Because the person who's reading the review that says, we love the student ministry, our teenage kids totally love being involved in this church, and I'm a parent of a teenager, and this sounds like the right church for me, and when I'm reading your response to that review, I see that you've linked right to the student ministry page on your website, boom, I click that link, I go right to your website, now I can get more information about your student ministry. It was relevant to me in that moment, and that's why I clicked on it. So make sure that you are responding to content-rich reviews. You need to be getting reviews on a consistent basis. You need to be responding to reviews on a consistent basis. Now, from time to time, I get a phone call or an email from a church that's gotten some bad reviews. Uh, this type of thing happens all the time. And uh, it's unfortunate that often there isn't much that you can do uh, to get rid of bad reviews. If they're legitimate, they're probably going to stay. Uh, if they're not legitimate, you can flag them. You can have multiple people flag them and Google will consider removing them. Uh, I have seen instances where there has been some sort of scandal or something that has happened in the church or some individual person got upset about something and they went and got a bunch of their friends to come and write reviews, people who aren't affiliated uh, with the church. 
Um, if that actually happens, I've actually seen churches go in and have multiple people flag those and say this isn't helpful or it's not a legitimate review. Uh, and, and Google has removed those. If you can't get them removed, the only way to deal with bad reviews is to bury them with more good reviews. So if you get a bad review, the best way to tackle that, if you can't get it removed, is to just go and get more reviews, bury it. Uh, you know, one one-star review or five one-star reviews because you've got a disgruntled person or an upset family or something weird happens that causes a bunch of bad reviews. Sometimes there's not much you can do. So go and get 10 or 15 or 20 new five-star reviews. Um, I once had a pastor ask me if Google would flag it, if there were a whole bunch of good reviews that came in at one time. Uh, in my experience, no, I've never seen Google uh, raise a red flag over like 10 people in one day leaving positive reviews. Yelp, on the other hand, I have heard, I don't know if this is actually true, uh, Yelp, I have heard, gets suspicious if multiple reviews are coming in in a very short period of time. So if you're asking people to leave you reviews on Yelp, which by the way, Yelp reviews are important because Yelp reviews get shared in Apple Maps. That's free of charge, has nothing to do with this particular podcast episode. Uh, but when people are using Apple Maps, they see reviews in Apple Maps, those are coming from Yelp. But most people are using Google Maps, so we're going to focus on the Google business profile and Google Maps. Uh, just bury bad reviews with more good reviews. All right, that's the second thing that you need to be doing on a regular basis. Now, next thing that you need to be doing is you need to be creating posts on your Google business profile. Did you know that you could create posts? Yes, you can create posts, just like you create posts on social media. So I'm going to share my screen right now and walk through what it looks like to actually create a post on a Google business profile account. So if you are logged into your Google business profile account, you'll actually see a panel on the left-hand side that looks, well, it just doesn't look like a Google search return. Uh, it says right here down at the bottom, only managers of this profile can see this. So if you own the Google business profile and you are logged into your uh, Gmail account or your Google account that is assigned to manage that, um, you simply do that by making sure that you're logged into your Google account and then you search for your church's business profile. Just do a search for your church and it will come up. If it doesn't, you can actually go to, I think it's business.google.com and you can actually log into your Google business profile there. That's yeah, business.google.com. Um, and if that's not right, Google it. Uh, you'll find you'll find it. Uh, but when you're in this, uh, when you're logged into your account, you've got this panel over here and you can see you've got a spot where you can read reviews. Uh, where you can uh, actually get more reviews. There's a little button right here that says ask for reviews. Uh, there's a little card here. I just pass it up. It says get more reviews. That's what you click on to actually get the short link that you can share. You can share it in email. You can share it on social. You can uh, create a QR code for it and you can ask people to leave your reviews. But what I want to talk about are posts. Now posts show up uh, kind of at the bottom of your Google business profile. There's a section down here. You can see that uh, this church has, this is an event. And I know it's an event because it actually has a bold title and then a date and then the name of the event. This is actually just a post and it's basically just a, a mirrored social media post. If I click on it, I can actually see um, that it has uh, just a little bit of information about it is an event, it's a class. Uh, new believers class. And then there's a little button here that says learn more. If I click on that, it's actually going to take me to uh, either a registration page or a page on the church's website. Now you can create posts by clicking the button here that says add update. Okay. Add update. I click on that and it gives me three different options. I can add an update. I can add an offer and I can add an event. I have not yet figured out how a church can utilize the add offer unless maybe you're selling something, but you want to add an update. If you click on this little arrow here, it brings a little window up where you can add photos. You can add multiple photos. You put your description in just like you would in a social media post. And then you can also add a button. You don't have to, but you can add a button and you can see you've got different options. You can book an appointment. You can order online. You can buy. You can learn more, sign up or call now. And you can use, I typically use either learn more or call now, unless it's an event that I want people to register to. Uh, and you can hit, let's say, sign up. And you can see that if I hit the sign up button, it asks me for the link that will take them to the actual registration page. So that's how you add an update to your Google business profile. I'm going to discard those changes uh, because I'm not going to do anything else there. And that's a quick and easy way for you to add an update. So how often should you add an update or a post to your Google business profile? I would say at least once a month. Uh, you could do it once a week. 
Uh, one of the, the best practices that I've seen churches do is uh, if you have a specific post that has trended well on your social media accounts, gotten a lot of engagement, Facebook and Instagram, just take that post and repurpose it over to your Google business profile. Uh, I don't think you need to be posting as regularly as you would on your regular social media accounts, but I do think that when you're engaged and using your Google business profile, it gives fresh content for people to see. And it also demonstrates for Google that you're willing to play in their sandbox um, and you're going to be rewarded with more local SEO juice. And also, obviously, if you are uh, creating more posts, you're also giving those links and more opportunities for people to click over to your website if they're interested in the events or activities or the things that you uh, are sharing in those posts. Now, the other thing that I, I briefly mentioned there just a second ago, I'm going to share my screen again, is creating events. So creating posts is something that you need to be doing on a regular base, basis. And the last thing that I'm going to talk about here is actually creating events, not too different than creating a post or adding a post. So again, I'm going to share my screen. And in here, you can see if I go back to that same spot that says add an update, I can add an event, and when I get to the add event window, it gives me the opportunity to add photos, event title, start date, start time, end date, end time, and then event details, and then I can also add a button. I can do a learn more, which maybe can take to a landing page on a website. Uh, I can add the uh, uh, call now if I want them to just call the church office to get more information, um, or I can do none, but I would recommend that if you're going to have an event, you should have a landing page, uh, some way for people to sign up, and uh, this is going to be instrumental, again, in helping more people learn about who you are and what you have to offer. Now, here's another thing that a lot of people are unaware of. When you're creating events in your Google business profile, those events become searchable in Google. So let's look at this. If I searched family event near me in Google, Google gives me a little, the equivalent of like a local pack in local search. I get three events by date. And then I have this little button right here that says search more events. When I click that, I get an entire calendar of events that are in my area, in my general area. And now I can see I've got all these family events near me. One of the ways that you can actually get your events to show up in these types of searches is by posting these events in your Google business profile. So if maybe it's a music event, a Christmas event, an Easter event, a family event, a kid's event, you can add those events in, into your Google business profile and there's a better chance that they will get found in these searches when people are searching for this type of topic. A little side note here. Um, I'm also a huge advocate of using um, uh, Eventbrite and all events, okay? Uh, those, uh, those platforms, Eventbrite and all events, when you create free events on those platforms, it costs you nothing. But when you create those events, um, each of those pages gets local schema markup, uh, added to that page, which makes those events searchable. So you can actually promote your events free in all events and Eventbrite, as long as it's a free event. Um, in fact, if you are a person, if, if, if you look at the map that I'm looking at here and I kind of start uh, scrolling through some of these events, you'll see I just kicked on, clicked on this one, and it shows that it is listed on all events. Uh, I can come down here and I can see uh, a few of these are probably, well, of course, because I'm trying to demonstrate it, I'm not, I'm not getting the results that I would like. Uh, I don't know what's going on here? Anyway, all that being said, if you post your events, there, there's another one on all events. <clears throat> all events and Eventbrite, that's another way for you to get your events to show up in these localized searches, okay? So I'm gonna wrap this podcast episode up. I'm gonna give you just a quick little recap of the things that we talked about today. The things that you need to be doing in your Google business profile on a regular basis. One, updating photos and videos. Two, asking for reviews. Three, responding to new reviews. Four, creating posts. Five, creating events. Hope that is helpful. If you have any questions, you can shoot me an email, reach out to us, leave a comment uh, on our YouTube channel if you happen to be watching this on YouTube uh, and we'd love to engage with you there. If you haven't subscribed, wherever you're listening to the podcast, make sure that you do that. Again, this is the beginning of our fourth season. Uh, we have, I don't know, 130, 140 episodes under our belt at this point. Uh, so you can go back and check out our archives, either on our YouTube channel on whatever your, your podcast, favorite podcasting platform is uh, so that you can uh, hear and learn some of the previous things that we've talked about and some of the guests that we've had on the show. We've got a 
few great guests coming up in the upcoming weeks. Uh, we're going to be talking about storytelling in church, uh, leadership in church, uh, lots of different things that we hope will move the needle uh, in helping your church reach more people online, helping your church grow, but ultimately helping God's kingdom grow as we introduce more and more people to Jesus. Thanks again for tuning in. I'm Bart Blair, and I'm out of here.